Richard Southern joins us again for the interesting stories of the day. And this time, you're right in the middle of it. You got to talk to a Canadian astronaut today about a subject that I know is very close to your heart. You know, I had asked him about UFOs. Yeah. Right? We're talking here about Jeremy Hansen. You saw him. He's right in the newsroom today. He very cool. He looks like an astronaut. He was made for this job. <laughs> Very smooth guy, smart guy. He's a colonel in the Canadian Air Force, and he's going to the moon next November. He's going to orbit the moon as part of the Artemis II mission. Very cool. We got a whole report on him coming up at City News at 6 on our website. But I did want to ask him about UFOs, or UAPs, as they're now called. Of course, it's a subject the United States government takes seriously. They say it's a real phenomenon. I asked the astronaut what he thinks and if he has ever seen one himself. Hmm. Is there any part of your training that tells you what to do if you encounter one on your mission? <laughs> no, no, there's no, uh, there's no training for that other than just common sense. Um, and I'm chuckling not because I don't take it seriously. I think the UAP thing is very, very real. Um, but I, I'm not actually, I don't believe we're being visited by extraterrestrials here on Earth, at least in present day. I, you know, it's just. Other, other astronauts have. Dr. the late uh, Edgar Mitchell said that. Yeah, I just haven't seen the evidence. Like my job before this was a fighter pilot. I used to sleep in a hangar. Did you see any UAPs in your, in your aviation career? No. Uh, Did didn't. you talk to anyone who has? Uh, I don't know that I have talked directly to anyone who has. But, you know, the ones we're seeing now and the video we have of things now, I, I truly think they're, of, they're terrestrial based. But they, they, they move at, at such speeds. Uh, that it's well, pretty hard to comprehend, don't you think? Yeah, when you look at the possibilities of technology now and some of the things that could create it, I was just talking about this with some of my fellow astronauts recently. I, I think there are still realistic explanations that they're terrestrial based. But hey, I'm open minded. I'm not saying they couldn't be, um, but I just haven't personally seen any evidence to suggest that. So I'm not, I'm not preparing to meet ET in space on this trip. Good. But I will tell you, like, fully believe the universe is huge, and. I, they have to be out there. But when you start to think about like what's required to travel between just one solar system and one other one, or a, like a galaxy and another galaxy, it gets really big. So I like the fact that he was open to it. Yeah, not shutting you down entirely. <laughs> um, I mean, he said we're not training for it on the mission. There was it's not part of the uh, the mission guidelines. What do you do if you see one of these things? But he said if we do see one. Well, use common sense. We're not going to hit anything if we're up there. Pretty interesting stuff, I think, here. And awesome, too, that we got to talk to him now before this all his big adventure launches. It's so uh, proud I was as a Canadian. This is obviously going to be the first Canadian to leave low Earth orbit. Doesn't know what he's going to bring with him yet, but he said he is going to bring something Canadiana with him. So we'll look out for that. Thanks for that, Richard. Thank you.